Waiting on notifications now. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have a magnificent guest with us today, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none other than none other than our brother and recurring guest, uh, taking time out of his busy schedule, Brother Captain Waleed Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Walaikum salam, sir. Yes, sir. And on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience, we want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule for this special interview. We have a lot of great things that we're going to address today. Uh, right now, Saber's Day is uh, October 7th. It's very near. And I wanted, we want to do some special things on people's podcast with the history of Saber's Day. And we want to start with the status uh, that you made about something that a letter that the minister wrote and something that took place with Saber's Day in New York City. Can you uh, let us know, sir? Oh, brother, thank you, uh, brother Joshua. First of all, for the great honor and privilege of being with you and the many guests who stay with the People's Podcast. And of course, special love and greetings from me and my family to you and your family. Yes, sir. Um, these conversations that we have, they're very important to me. They allow me to travel back through the little bit that I know of a man who was so important that his work will live way, way beyond the time that he physically is among us. And that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, His work will go on for eons of time. He is referred to himself as the eternal door to the eternal father. And he said that means a very, very long time. And so, when you talk to me, my life has really no meaning unless it has relevance to what I've learned of and from him. So many of your guests may not know that after the historic Madison Square Garden sermon, October 7, 1985, a great overwhelming event. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan wanted us to return to New York City for Savior's Day, 1987. And I was uh, fortunate to find a letter that he penned to the believers. And I alluded to it on social media, you know, you're my social media guy, so I don't really know too much about it. I, you know, you, you see me, you see, I repost a lot of stuff, <laughs> you know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. people don't really like when you're just talking about your teacher in the teachings. I don't really post a lot of pictures and videos. So my Facebook page may not be so exciting. But if you in search of truth and love to read, then you might find something that I put there of importance. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the National Laborers wanted to have Savior's Day in New York City in mm -hmm. October, 1987. And the people that he wanted to rent the space from is the historic Jacobs Javits Convention Center. Mm -hmm. And in my possession is a letter and I'll be happy to share it with you and through you to whoever desire. I wanna just read a little bit of it 
because there is tremendous historical context regarding this letter and the date that Allah directed him to write it. He writes in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. October 19th, 1987. Assalamu alaikum. Dear believer, may this letter find you well, in good health and spirits, enjoying the many blessings of our savior, Allah, to whom praise is due forever. As you know, we have been in active litigation with the administration of the Jacobs Javits Convention Center in New York City for their outright refusal to rent us available space for our annual Savior's Day Convention, which was to be held on October 25th, 1987. Judge William Maku upheld the Javits Center's claim that it was a business decision to deny us occupancy on October 25th because they had rented other space in the complex to persons whom they felt were not compatible to us nor we to them. However, the judge did order them to find an alternative dates at which time we could be exclusive leasees of the entire facility, which according to their first representatives to us holds between 35 and 90,000 persons. He goes on, he says, it was and is the desire of the national laborers to hold our national convention in New York City, from which we want to make a statement to the local residents, the country, and the entire world. We know that it is disappointing to you that we will not be able to have our convention in October as we had planned. Allah, however, is the best planner and the best knower. And there's more to the letter, which I will spare in the reading now. But again, my brother, if you like, I will be happy to send it to you and you can make it avail to your many, many followers and viewers. Now, <clears throat> again, here's Savior's Day in October. This was before the Million Man March. <clears throat> so we had two Savior's Days. February 26th, of course. And of course, October 7th, though we were going to have the convention on the 25th. Now, why is this letter so important to me as one of his students? Of course, he acknowledges the disappointment of the believers wanting to come to New York for Savior's Day. However, the same exact day that he writes this letter, a great event took place in the same city, New York City, on the exact same day. Well, what was that? called it Black Monday. Mm. What a name, right? Deny the black Muslims their convention and then Allah sends a witness disapproval of the mistreatment of the black Muslims. Something happened that you call Black Monday. Well, what happened? market fell off the table that day. Mm. Billions and billions and billions of dollars were lost. The great fall of 1987 placed the very day 
father wrote this letter to Eva. Brother Dennis put in one of his comments, proves we do not serve a mystery God. And for us as Muslims, we're going to have to raise our head up, get more acquainted to current events. Because in our little world, looking for evidence, but we need to in our horizon. There are things that take place geopolitically in the business world that bears witness to the rightness of the position of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the truth that he speaks to us. There's much more testimony than just watch the weather. Watch the weather. Well, what the hell are you doing if you just watching the weather? Mm. Evidently, you must not be working. You're just watching the weather. There's more making everything is to the presence of his servant and the revelation that he and Christ give to him. So we got to we got to look up, study the news. We got to become more uh 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 there in a depth and understanding of current events of geopolitical maneuverings that are taking place. May I make one more point on that, sir? Absolutely. Two days ago, Russian forces destroyed a leopard tank. Leopard tank is made by Germany. The tank was located in Ukraine. You know, many people don't know that the Ukrainians are actually Nazis. Mm. Nazis. A few days ago in Canada, Vladimir Zelensky brought a 98-year-old Nazi SS soldier to Canada where he was honored by the Canadian government. That he fought against the Russians people that fought against the Russians in World War II were the Germans. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nazi. So these people are so blind, they're actually honoring Nazis because they fought Russians. That the Ukrainians are actually Nazis. Them follow a man named Stepan Bandero. To grow up, if we're going to be rulers, of this planet, ooh, what you don't have no knowledge of. Why do you think he gives you actual facts and student enrollment? Why do you think you know the square mileage of the earth, the square mileage of the waters? How much is the land? How much is the water, the rivers, the mountains? You're supposed to be able and get your mind to accept the fact that Allah intends to make us rulers of this planet stuck in the building. I'm a, I'm a squad leader. I'm a lieutenant. Really that everything that happens in the city, you responsible for. Allah didn't give us general orders to practice in a building. Mm -hmm. Just to practice rulership. Leadership in the nation of Islam is actually the basis of government for 60 million black people. Government that you're looking at, see yourself like that, then sometime as a young man, you wonder what is my purpose? Mm. The basis of the government of the kingdom of God on earth. Yes, sir. Germany, Takeover. Ukrainians were not trained to handle this kind of sophisticated technology. So when Russia sent a drone to kill the tank, the commander said, Well, we went to pull the tongue out, meaning to see who was in there. 
German soldiers in there. Mm, mm. Three of them were killed, but the tank commander was alive. And he was saying, don't kill me, I'm German. He said, well, this is our company, this is our unit, this is where we located it. Well, what the hell that got to do with this interview? Again, to get up and look for the fulfillment of that which God and his servant promised us. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad in 1964, he wrote a letter or he gave a talk to his then national laborers. And he talked about how World War III would begin. It would start in Eastern Europe, Germany. It started off as a conventional war, but it will escalate into a nuclear war. For Minister Louis Farrakhan, his minister, June 9th, 1996, in a sermon he titled Chastisement. Can America avert it? 9th, 1996, he recited the notes that he took on that day in 1964. And he said that his teacher told the laborers not to speak it at that time, lest they be killed. Brother, 1964, you got some wisdom that we're looking at literally being fulfilled today. So what this got to do with the German commander in the tank? Germany respond. Because Russia killed them, but they were fighting in Ukraine. That's illegal according to international law. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Ukrainian, Mr. Putin, the president of Russia, he never said they were at war. He called it a limited military operation. He never said he declared war on Ukraine. This is limited because he wanted to bring the Ukrainians to the negotiating table because he wanted them to stop slaughtering the Russian people in two regions of Russia, then Ukraine, the Donbass and Donetsk. They tricked Russia in 2014 under an agreement called the Minsk Accord. Well, Brother Wally, what that got to do with the history of the nation of Islam? Listen, man, you can sit up here and be dumb as a box of rocks all you wanna, Talking about you in the classroom of God. Mm. Believe that. Every time I hear my teacher, he's talking geopolitical, political, financial. He told us about the four presidents who were murdered, who resisted the, the, advent, the advent or the foundation or the formation of a Federal Reserve Bank. Nothing about what he's talking about. And worse, Josh, we won't go behind him and study up to bear witness to what he's teaching. That's why our witness is weak. I believe in this. That's the dumbest thing you can say to somebody. You believe in what? Prove? We open our mouth. When we open a meeting, we say what? I bear witness. No God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Well, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is taught us, he said, bear. He said, the word I is the ninth letter of the alphabet. represents independence and completion. Mm -hmm. He said, the word bear means to carry in one's mind. This means to give evidence, testimony, or proof thereof. If you're not studying, how strong is your witness? Mm. That's why when little things come up in our lives, it shakes us to our core because we are not working to really build our foundation. Though my brother Ishmael and others on Sunday do a pretty good job lifting up the, the time and what must be done. Minister Louis Farrakhan got a body of work, work that's on 
equal anywhere on earth at any time. Been teaching since September 1977. What about all of that? The lectures that are foundational lectures, same as they 81, 82, 83, 84. Every believer should know those sermons. We did them for a specific reason. But if you don't know the context by which he stood up, then the lectures don't make sense. You don't know that they were trashing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's domestic life. You don't know that they were trying to mock his teachings, mock the mother plane, mock the great math D. And why the man did what he did, but if you don't study the totality and breadth and scope of his rebuilding work, then you only know an itty bitty teeny tiny piece of him. Girl. When Russia killed those tankers, big thing. Remember, America already destroyed the pipeline. Stream two. They blew it up. Biden told them he was going to do it, and they did it. Well, what's going to happen? It's coming, brother. In mm -hmm. Europe, the people are going to freeze to death. The German people are getting more and more angry with America. America blew the pipeline up and forced Germany to buy much higher, more expensive natural gas from America. Do you know why the news was focusing on the little country in Africa called Niger? It's because just a coup took over, brother. Mm, mm. Let me tell you something, and all of this is related because see, how, how can I be a witness of God's presence and be dumb as hell? You're supposed to be able to talk to me about almost any subject that exists, and I shouldn't be just, as my teachers say, I shouldn't be just on the spokes of knowledge, branch of knowledge. He said I should be at the very root, at the very core of knowledge. So what happened in Niger and in Africa and why the French were there inspiring the African countries to want to make war with Niger is because Europe, a pipeline through Nigeria, through Niger, that would ultimately end up in Europe as a supplement to Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So when Niger did the coup, and took the president and put him under house arrest, that threatened the flow of gas to Europe. That's why they so upset. Mm. The news. You told us a long time ago to begin to look at the news from a more international perspective. He said, try to see the news from outside of America. You got a little box a little streaming media device, Josh, if I don't have 100,000 to 700,000 channels, I don't have one. Mm. I can watch the news from anywhere on the earth anytime I feel like it. Brother, record a long time ago because what you watching in mainstream news is garbage garbage so letter market crash response to the crash ronald wilson reagan president established a plunge protection team that's a group of federal reserve bankers and wall street bankers who get together to make sure that wall street don't crash no more the way it did mm why there's such a distinction between Wall Street going up and the actual economic condition of the country. Feel me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You no, know, that's a lot. I hope it makes sense for you. It makes perfect for sense. your viewers. I know that's a lot, but it's just a little bit because I'm not the heavy man. The heavy man is our father. 
I'm just trying to be a bearing of witness. I want to be a star. He's the son. Stars bear witness to the presence of the sun, right? Yes, sir. Don't you want to be a star? Absolutely. In a silly entertainment way, but in the real sense, bearing witness to the presence of the sun. Now check it. Point on October 19th. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan rededicated the Great House, Mas Mariam, October 19, 2008. From 1987, 2008 is what? 21 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a picture on my Facebook page of the mother wheel in broad daylight. Yes, sir, yes, sir. The foreground of that picture is Moss Marianne. The date that I took the picture is the very date that he rededicated the Moss, October 19th. Mm. You feel me? Yes, sir. 19, as he has taught us, and Mother Tanetta, may Allah be pleased with us, she helped us to understand that 19 is what? That's Allah God's signature. That's right. Is that right? That's right. So you got the 19 three different times. Seven. thousand eight twice. October 19. Very significant. All right. So that's the letter, brother. I hope that that make a little sense for you and your audience it makes perfect sense all practice a lot thank you very much for breaking it down and people are showing you love all around the world for the nelson ramos out of massachusetts assalamu alaikum beautiful people of god my sister Miriam, sister Naima, alaikum salam family alaikum salam Naima, naima brother uh, adio nasura he says i love you sincerely captain wali assalamu alaikum brother captain deshane says asa good to see captain thank you sir alaikum salam and people can't wait to put this on youtube Shout out to Brother Musa, Sister Auntie, Brother Kente Russell, I, I, everybody on our YouTube family as well, Twitter, and, and people who are watching all around the world. Okay, let's go back, uh, Rick Captain, to the Savior's Days that you mentioned. What is the significance of the 81, 1981, 82, 83, and 84 in the, in the order that the minister gave those? What is the significance of those? You got to go back and study the titles. I believe 1981, I could be wrong. A savior is born. Mm. 1981 for the black man and woman of America. Why is that important? Savior's Day 1981 was the first Savior's Day that we've held since February, 1975. Six years. The last time we held Savior's Day, announced to the world that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad had departed. Think about it. February 1975, the nation of Islam comes to Chicago, expecting to hear from the messenger of Allah. And they get the news early on Saturday morning that he had transitioned. I do not think that that's insignificant that it was announced on a Saturday because if you study his minister in a sermon called The Life of Jesus, December 20th, 1981, I'm so grateful that Allah causes me to remember. I don't try to remember out of vanity. I remember so that you and those who look can go and study for themselves. Not just to see if the dude was right. I'm telling you something you that I feel I 
think things that are of consequence in my development. So February 1981, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan announces to the world that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is physically alive. Mm, mm, I mean, mm. now I know <clears throat> many don't want to touch that because many think that, you know, the ministers just, you know, uh, ain't no proof. That's because you ain't been looking at the man's life for 40 years. Every walk, every step, every word, every action is a witness to the truth that he has taught and is willing to give his life for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he tells the world that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is alive, February 1981. Now, what many people do not know is that Savior's Day actually helps determine the course of action or the agenda for the year for the nation. Mm, mm, mm. Many people don't know that. You think it's just a, yeah, it's a convention. Oh boy, man, I can't wait to see so-and-so. I'm going to get with up. Man, okay, that's nice. But it's more to it than that. Now, look at this Savior's Day. You hardly ever hear it mentioned. The war of Armageddon has begun. Mm. Why isn't it mentioned, Brother Doctor? Why? Why is that subject so difficult for those who claim to follow him to accept? Did you know that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan wrote an article called The Crucifixion of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam? And in this historic writing where he is describes those forces that work to destroy the nation. He talks about Jesus. And he said that there were people around Jesus who gave him poor information, causing him to make bad decisions, causing the very people who benefited from the message of Jesus to be the very ones to call for his crucifixion. Mm. Think about that. You got people around Jesus who feed him misinformation. He says it, who benefited from it, hurt by it, they want his crucifixion. That's amazing. So you don't hear Armageddon, you hear the judgment. But it seems to me that once the judgment is given, Armageddon comes quickly thereafter. Mm -hmm. That's the war that in all wars. Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. what he taught, right? Yes, sir. The judgment don't end the wars. It's Armageddon that end the wars. Mm -hmm. We got to get up on our theology. Yes, sir. And it's amazing to me, and it's just, it's just me. I don't hear too much talk about Armageddon. I wonder, is that an indicator of how much we're tied to this world? What do I mean? I wonder, is an indicator that our hopes, our desires, our dreams are tied to this world, so we don't want to see the end of this world, so we don't talk about, lift up, discuss Armageddon. Mm. I mean, think about it. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us what? He said the falling away is twofold. He said, one, when Satan is revealed, the people fall away. But another is the people falling away from the messenger of God as Satan intensifies his persecution of the righteous. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. 
Save as they 82, God's judgment on America. Check it. God's judgment of America, 1982, 2023, 41 years later, the war of Armageddon has begun. Mm -hmm. See, there's a, a mastery. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that Allah's language is mathematics. That's right. That's right. I'm not going to act like I'm one of these being soup scientists. I, I'm not that dude. I'm not him. But I try to study. And I know that in the language of mathematics, there are certain communications that are for us. We just are so wrapped up in our pursuits that we're not paying attention anymore. I understand that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been raising the question, could you not stay awake and pray with me for one hour? Mm -hmm. What's happening with the disciples, brother? Mm -hmm. How is it that we're going asleep? He said that there are certain aspects that Jesus taught that they did not necessarily agree with nor believe in. So as you hear this fella's voice and you watch this tape, you go in the quiet of your own soul and ask yourself, am I in complete agreement with every word that he has taught? Mm -hmm. Do, is there something he said that I don't believe in? Because if you honest with yourself, and if the answer is not good, then if you're alive, he said, then you got a chance to get it right. Mm -hmm. Because whatever the status of your faith is while he's here, that's what the status of your faith is will be on his departure. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That's yes, why he said, he said, you would be a fool to want me up out of here. Now you should ask God to keep me here for as long as you can get it right. Did not he say that his music will help us to return to faith on his absence? Yes, sir. Yes, well, sir. if I got to return to faith, then where the hell did I go? That's right. That's right. But did not. That's right. It may be a little painful, but this is where we at. We don't need no sugar coating. Don't I'm, I I want to look up. Condition is right here on this earth. When we talk about those things that God has made for the destruction of this world, that's not something to celebrate over. Mm -hmm. Because we may be victim of the destruction of the thing that we claim to be celebrating. That's because right. who say that we own it? of our community, brother, we not own it. Mm -hmm. The devil's so smart, Josh. You can watch a movie and you are actor, bro. You right. Masterful. How to emotion. And I know you study because you intense. Yes, so you know the devil, he don't just use images. He use music to conjure up emotion, don't he, bro? That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. So you can watch a movie and be all teary eyed over a character that got lost or somebody got died or hurt or whatever. But you can watch the news where your brother get gunned down and don't feel a goddamn thing. But yet you want to say how alive you are. I'm alive. I'm dead. We just not honest with ourselves. Because if the devil can bring up emotion, and we don't even have natural feeling for our own people. No wonder the hearts wax cold. Mm. So Savior's Day 83. Savior again is born for the black man and woman of America in Gary, Indiana. 82 at the Conrad Hilton. 81 at the Congress Hotel. 84. a weapon more powerful than nuclear bombs 
at the Richard L. Jones Armory. Look at the first four. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just look at them and study them. You want to deny yourself the man's history that's for you. We say our prayers, Allah make us say, surely I've been unjust to myself and I confess my fault. If you don't learn all that the man has taught and done, you're being unjust to yourself. So then, of course, 85. Power at last forever. Yes, sir. People yes, sir. organizing, working for economic rebirth. Power was an acronym. Then 86, the No Savings Day, 87, then 88. To the 10th. Celebration was at the final call in February. Of course, 89 was the dawn. Eight day celebration with a big tent. That uh, Savior's Day, 18,000 people at Mars Marion. Can you imagine 18,000 people? He gave us a glimpse Savior's Days ago. For the swan song. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We were under the tent, right? And we thought it was going to be cold, but the tents can get very warm. They got modern technology, you know? So you can, you can just study the man's history, just studying the titles of the Savior's Day sermon is my point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And thank you very much, Rick Captain. Thank you, everyone who's watching uh, all around the world. I had a question. Let's, I want to go to the dawn and the tent and things of that nature. Before there was social media, before, um, you know, I guess before, I mean, social media is the main thing that we use now. How, how were you feeling when the minister would call for a savings day and you all expecting, did you know the 18,000 would come? Like, how were you all getting this word out to that many people with no, with no like mainstream media or no, like, like how are you all doing it? Well, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he outworked everybody in the nation, has done so from day one and continues to do so today. All of us put together that outwork him. And it's unfortunate that those today a very snapshot in his work. Go back and study the great power at last sermon in Madison Square Garden, October 7, 1985. He says in that sermon that for the past eight years, crisscross America traveling every year from 250,000 to 300,000 miles every year for eight years. Mm. Imagine that kind of travel. Herculean. Believable. The new believer that come in today, well, he ain't on the road. A fool. In prison, he told me that he ain't taught in, in America. Mm, mm. Mm. A major college campus and even the small ones that he hasn't taught in. I've been in college campuses. If I told you, you wouldn't believe it. At the University of Minnesota in the Big Ten, Wisconsin, yes, sir. Michigan, yes, sir. Michigan yes, sir. State. Stan? Down in the University of Texas, hook them home. A little bit. That's why Allah instructs us to study his life. Nobody give you an itty bitty snapshot of this man. Mm, mm, mm. Used to understanding the minister on what you get on Sunday. Are you serious? Mm, mm. Sunday is an introduction. 
but you got to do some studying for yourself. That's the part that we don't want to deal with. We want somebody to always hand feed us, spoon feed us. Well, if I don't get it from him, I ain't going to get it. And miss me with that. Me enough if he never say another word to me in this life or the next 10 lives. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So how yes. we got, how did we get work? Days at the final call building. Used to have a little printer where we would print out what you would call handbills or flyers, not even in color, in black and white. Mm. <laughs> mm. And we would print flyers out, man, and go door to door. We would go where our people were, in the parking lots of the stores, the grocery stores, the Dominic's, the Jewels, and line the flyers up. Our father would do his work on the radio day on the radio he had a radio broadcast every sunday live for mm. years a respect for life every sunday at two o'clock on am 1570 wbee mm. so we didn't have the technology and it wasn't a whole lot of us boy and the big thing that we did we hung posters. Mm. Posters on light poles, on telephone poles, on buildings that were boarded up. That's the first time I ever laid eyes on him was a poster from Savior's Day. The man looked so handsome, so suave, so beautiful. A black suit, cheeks was I said, wow, you know, we had black opera singers. Mm -hmm. I thought he was an opera singer. He looked so dignified and cultured. I didn't know that he was the premier preacher of truth in the absence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I didn't know that. So this is how we got the word out. No other way. Final call, the distribution of the final call newspaper. We 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 don't lift that up of the resurrection. It should be lifted up. Mm -hmm. The final call newspaper is so important in the work of the resurrection of the dead. It's the messenger's message without any tampering. Nobody can mess with that. Josh, you skilled with the video. Nobody can cut, splice, and edit that. Mm, mm. Out straight as he wanted. That final call newspaper absolutely aided in filling up all the venue. You thought you're talking about all over America, brother. The man was drawing tens of thousands in the 80s. Mm. In the 80s. The dawn was an eight-day celebration. Mm. Imagine that. Imagine people like Queen Latifah, Big Daddy Kane, Public Enemy, Roy Ayers, Stephanie Mills, all of these celebrities. He knew all of them and knows all of them and has taught them all. And they came and they helped him to celebrate the recapturing of Mas Marianne. Mm. It, I don't know if the final call, maybe we should ask our brother Abdul Rasul Muhammad, the general manager, if they have that, because that is a great historical archive for the believers to see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. That's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing the history of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You can't contain it. You can't present it on a Sunday. You can have a 10,000 Sundays and you can't get his history in it. 
but why not direct people to study his history at their own leisure? Mm -hmm. So why not lift up some great exploits that we've witnessed him? I got one. During a, a great event in Chicago called the World Parliament of Religions, this gathering brought together the leaders of many great religions all over the earth. One of the people in attendance was the Dalai Lama himself. Mm. Now, I want you to listen to this because I don't know where yet, but your dad, he served where he served. I served where I served. Well, he had to leave. Said, Jack, you got it. Well, we, we know what that meant, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So our mother, Mother Tanetta, may Allah forever be pleased with her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And may we begin to understand and approach with greater understanding the depth of wisdom contained in the body of knowledge that she has left us. Yes. Mother always moving about in an acting. So she tells me that in a conversation with the chief of staff for the Dalai Lama, that they expressed a desire for the fruit of Islam, the name given to the military training of the men who belong to Islam in North America to secure the Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. I got general orders. My general orders say in any case not covered by instructions, call the guard. That's right. Well, the only guard to call at that time, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So imagine I go sit down where he's at and I whisper in his ear. I said, Brother Minister, it is reported that the Dalai Lama may want the FOI to secure him. He says, go and look into it right away. And looked at it. I spoke to the chief of staff. He said, no, that's okay, but thank you so very much. And of course, I reported that to our father. But here's the Dalai Lama in that Religion, he's looked at as a deity, a God. Now he, we respect what he do and who he is, of course. But that's the, a glimpse of the magnitude of the people who were there. Mm, mm. Other times I've had to tell him about bomb threats. Mm. Think about it. The same conference, World Parliament of Religions, I get a call on a unit for my dear brother, Brother Sadiq Muhammad, formerly Brother Melvin. Yes, sir. He says, inform one O of a bomb threat. Now, I'm in the palace downstairs, ready to go. I can't just act like I don't hear this. Tell it. Brother Minister, Melvin just told me to let you know that there's a bomb threat. Now you won't believe his response. The man busts out in laughter. Mm. <laughs> he said, no, Jack, the bomb is on the way. Let's go. Mm. To tell him this over the years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the first time I had to say that. Your dad has said had to say that to him many times as well. The enemy always tried to frighten the man of God. Yes, sir. The man of God is completely fearless. Yes, sir. And that's how he wants us to be. 
So the more we convey to you accounts of his life, Allah willing, hopefully it will get other brothers to become fearless. Let me tell you something. This don't mean you always ready to fight. Stop lying. This means when you're not a liar. Mm -hmm. This means when you speak the truth, regardless of whom or what, now you're fearless. Mm -hmm. The fight, God damn it, that don't mean you fearless. Mm -hmm. you might be a self-hater. Mm -hmm. You speak the truth regardless of whom or what, now you're fearless. And that is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Feel me, bro? Beautiful teaching, Brickhead. All praise is due to Allah. And, and Brickhead, people showing you love all across the country. Yes, sir. Uh, brother, studying is a must. I've been witness to that. Yes, sir. Brother, that is the work. We have to remember. Oh, Brother Daniel E. from Chicago says, thank you. He's in Phoenix now. That's a wonderful analogy from the man in our midst and didn't show any fear amongst the enemies of Muhammad. Beautiful. Uh, but Captain, we have a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone who has continued to watch and show love to the People's Podcast. If you all would like to be sponsors and or do donors, please cash at the People's Podcast. And uh, we have a special announcement later on uh, that we're going to talk about with Brother Captain and some things that we that we just want to address to the bring to the public's aware. Um, I'm on. One second make the public aware here we go television and film editing please reach out to him if you need any of those services sister miriam's abc i love me children's book and coloring book and now spanish book all three available on amazon.com sister naima's stay on point dance academy llc she teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country right here in the studios of atlanta georgia Dr. Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad's COVID-19 Disinfected Cleaning Services, out of Chicago. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in a Movement of Christ, available on adulsharif.com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available on Amazon. Perfect, and thank you everyone who always shows love to the People Podcast, as well as our last sponsor, this is the Sherry Muhammad of, of Asiatic Minds. Please enroll your children in AsiaticMinds.com. She teaches STEM virtually to young kings and queens all around the world. Please enroll your child into AsiaticMinds.com. Thank you very much to the staff of AsiaticMinds.com. All right. Yes, sir. And Brother Captain, I wanted to, um, we have so, so many more questions for you, but we wanted to uh, just do a brief while we're dealing with uh, sponsorships and cash apps and things of the people's podcast. Uh, you brought something to my attention that I wanted to make sure we brought to the believing family and to the family all around the world uh, who have love for you and continue to show love to you. Uh, but we wanted to put that love into uh, action could you let us know what uh, it seems to be going on with you, sir, and how can we be of assistance? I, I appreciate you, Brother Joshua, um, for allowing me uh, to share something that I don't um, broadcast. Uh, and I'll get I'll get right to it. In um, 2018, I was uh, stricken with an infection in my foot, and um, I was rushed into the hospital, and uh, there I had four surgeries on my foot. My foot had become uh, fibrous, meaning that the tissue was dead. And so I had surgery 
to remove a bone in my foot and to what they call debride fibrous tissue in my foot. I remained in the hospital for almost a month. Context wise, you know, a sister can have a baby and she be out in 48 hours. That's right. It's that right. long. That's right. So a month is a long time. And, uh, you know, it's amazing because they wanted to put me in a rehab center. And when I went to the rehab center, the condition was so deplorable that I, I left there and I went home and uh, believe it or not, the very next morning, I went home on a Friday night, the next morning, about eight o'clock in the morning, my phone rang and it's the administrative assistant to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Sister Amina. Mm. And if you ever get one of them calls, she'll say, Brother Wally, hold for the minister. So now mind you, I haven't told him anything because like many of you, I never wanted to put my issues on him, never. I always felt like you've taught me enough that I should be able to forge my way in this life without coming to you because you connected me with God. You feel me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he calls me. I hadn't told him anything. And he gets on the phone. He says, Wally. I said, yes, sir. He said, you've been on my mind for days. What's going on? I dropped the phone. Mm. I hadn't said anything to him. Mm. I hadn't told, but maybe two or three people. And I knew they hadn't told him. So he calls me and he invites me. He tells me to stay close. He said, cause I want to have you for dinner. So he has me for dinner during the Savior's Day weekend that year. Okay, fine. Foot is healed, so I think. A little bit after one of your interviews, I didn't tell you, I didn't say anything. I was rushed to the hospital again with fever and chills. Now I don't, I'm not so comfortable at saying these things, you know, because we like to play, but if you know anything about me, I'm, I, I don't play. I try to be very serious in whatever it is. I have a sense of humor, but I'm not playing with nobody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I end up going back to the hospital and uh, come to find out that remnants of the bone in my foot became infected. And I was near sepsis, meaning that the toxin was taking over the organs of my body. So again, I had, I was rushed into emergency surgery and this was in mid July. And I remained in the hospital for several days. In fact, I did two more interviews with you after the surgery, unbeknownst to nobody. I didn't tell you. I didn't allude to it. I didn't hint at it. I asked Allah for help because I wanted to make my word my bond. I think that when you have me on, I take it very seriously because of the magnitude of your work and because of the people who watch, who may not even acknowledge, but I know they watch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I didn't want to come on having weakness like that. In fact, you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has said about eating being a weakness and why hypocrites would always be around the salam because that's a signal of weakness and loose talk takes place 
when people are in moments of weakness. Mm. So when you're weak, people expect loose talk. But I'm looking at a man that's 90 years old that you'll never catch him weak. So he's my example. Well, anyway, after that surgery here recently, the foot is healing. However, I cannot move on it. They assigned me what they call a knee rover, meaning that anywhere I desire to go around the house, I have to put my knee in this scooter. So I cannot walk. Meaning, as a man, that makes it very difficult to provide for yourself and your family. I, I'm in sales. I have a company that sells uh, medical supplies. I sell everywhere from thermal scanners to uh, air and surface purification machines to masks and gloves and some of that other stuff that they had us selling during the onset of the pandemic. But that's, and you know, in sales, Josh, you know, people talk to you on the phone, but you know, they got to see you. They like to see you, they like to feel you, right? And they got to remember that they like you because selling ain't got nothing to do with the product, it's got everything to do with you, right? Mm -hmm. So if they not feeling and seeing and touching you, then they're not too likely to buy what you're offering, even if it's good if you're on the phone. So that takes away a tremendous ability to provide for self. And, you know, when we talked about this, I really wrestled with it, you know, because men like me a lot of people you know they think that you're hard and because you don't show weakness though we know we all have it I want to look vulnerable but you know you encourage me and i will forever be grateful to allah for you to even talk about this because it's a, you know, you don't, you don't ask, but we don't have insurance. You know, we, ain't, we don't own State Farm and Mutual Omaha and all that other crap. Our insurance, the brotherhood. And if the brotherhood is not here to help us in times of need, then what the hell is the point? Mm. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that the greatest thing that Allah came to do for us was to build us a brotherhood. You know, and I was just looking at his words and closing the gap where he talks about a believer having a claim to half a bowl of soup, his fellow believer. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. What do you mean a claim? Interesting word that the man of God used. He didn't say right, he said claim. To get to the point. Whereas he said, if you stub your toe, Josh, touch. we get so connected with one another that we feel one another. See, your real brother, you don't have to go into all of your situation. He can hear a few words and say, okay, man, teach you how to help. He already know how to help. This is what we're supposed to be about. And it's difficult for me to have tried to help so many. And now I find myself on the other side of it. We've raised all kind of money for all kind of people for decades. Um, you know, it's been a little difficult not being able to fend for self and provide. 
So it, I'm a little squeamish. In fact, my back is very sweaty because I'm very nervous. But I hope that that answers uh, to some degree your question that you asked me, Brother Joshua. Absolutely, Brother Hathen. And we want to come together and thank you for your, and your family with action. Uh, the most honorable Miss Lewis I said that love is an action word to show you love, not just by saying thank you for your work and dedication, but by putting that into, uh, you know, into practice. What is the uh, cash app that we can reach out uh, and show you love with? Thank you, brother. Um, my cash app is what I try to be, servant. It's, uh, I guess, dollar sign, uh, servant, S-E-R, the number one, the number nine, V-A-N-T. Hold on, let me, <laughs> you know, you get a little old, you, you forget. Hold on, let me make sure that that's right. Um, yeah, that's right. Dollar sign, capital S, lowercase e, lowercase r, the number one, the number nine, V-A-N-T. That is uh, for the brother and anyone who uh, will be of assistance at this time. You know, as I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say, that he pledges his life. And we can't follow him and not do the same. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we, we have to begin to put our word out there and then walk behind our word. These are difficult times and they're going to get rough. He said in the time of famine, it may force several families to live together. You know, we're gonna to have to come out of surface Muslims. Most of us don't know where one another live, don't know how one another live or nothing. And we got all this farmland. You, you know, you see different Muslims talking about farmland, but we need to come together to determine how can we make sure that not one Muslim in the nation of Islam is hungry. Yes, sir. Yes, got sir. Many Muslims right now, brother, they are hungry, but they're ashamed because the love is not there where they have the confidence to share the pain that they're suffering in. And that's wrong, man. That's wrong. You don't feel one another's pain? What the hell is the point? is the point, man. I'm supposed to feel your pain. You're supposed to feel my pain. That's why the man said unity, a weapon more powerful than nuclear bomb. We got to come together. Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan put it like this, brother. He said, what is it that's going to bring us into unity? He said, some of us don't even know who our family is until somebody died. He said, therefore, God is going to send death among us. He said, and when he, God, starts killing us, he said, then you're going to know that your church is my church and your baby is my baby and we're the same people. We're supposed to be the leaders of the black people in America. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. damn, if we don't show love for one another, what chance do our people got? We're just threatening to cut everybody off just late last night. Mm. A so-called spending bill. But we got all these people with all this farmland. When can we come together and have a plenary session to make sure that every Muslim eats? The Bessie Jean, her father's told her he don't want to see not one Muslim hungry, man. We're supposed to make sure that we got food, produce, shelter. Stop pretending I love you. 
Them is empty words. They action words. Because it's me now, but damn, I'm going to work hard and have worked hard. Johnny come lately here. We're 40 years in. We built countless soldiers out of jail. Countless. Had nobody to turn to. I'll get you. My brother, student supreme captain, Mustafa Farrakhan Muhammad bailed me and brother Sadiq out one day. We were we were in a in a rental car, them Lincolns we used to keep in, you know, close to the time it should have got back. Mm. So the devils pulled us over, detectives, guns drawn. 57 of Indiana under the L tracks in Chicago, guns drawn. Get out of the car. the most humble, greatest man you ever meet. Mm -hmm. he, the, he the student first, I'm the second, he talking. He said, okay, sir, calm down. He, he calming them down. They take us to 51st Street. First in Wentworth, brother Daniel, you know where that's at. And they take us, brother, to jail. And they got us sitting in these seats like we're students. They had these student seats with like the desk and you sit in in it. And they got handcuffs up along the wall. Mm -hmm. They got us handcuffed in these chairs. And almost every policeman came by to look at us because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's security was in jail. Mm -hmm came by like we was an exhibit in a museum. He made a call, I made a call. Mustafa Farrakhan Muhammad. He used to, in them days, he used to keep money with rubber bands on it in a shoe box in a closet. So he came with a rubber band or not and bailed us both out of jail. The brotherhood, man. He didn't say, man, what the hell was you doing? You got my men in here. Out. Thank you the money. Only for a select few. Brotherhood. Brotherhood is for the least of these. Remember Jesus talking to his disciples? Like, when did we not feed you? When did we not clothe you? When That's did right. we not shelter you? That's right. You just stole on them. As much as you have not done so unto these, the least of my brethren. That's right. Done so unto me. How can we have Muslims starving in the nation of Islam? How can we have Muslims, Josh, on EBT? I hear in certain FOI classes out west, out west, out west, that you encourage young men to go and sign up for EBT. Are we insane? EBT? Muhammad, you getting EBT. What the hell is going on? He said it. You know how to reach me. Call me. We got the we got women with babies who don't get no help. I heard our father say that we should put men out who make babies and don't take care of them. That's what our morals are falling apart, bro. Criticizing us, it's happening in our community. We're a microcosm of it because the placenta that separates toxin. We have rejected that. It's called the supreme wisdom. Mm, 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 Whatever's mm. happening in the nation is not supposed to be, it's supposed to be the best example. Not the same thing. I thought opposites attract and like repel. So if we're not attractive, then maybe we're more like the world than we think we are. Mm.
So anyway, that's what's happening with your brother. Please don't make me talk about it no more. No, no, it's no. A, we good. We good, Rick. We good. All right. All right. Yes, and sir. and I, I like to say whoever is moved, I thank a lot for you in an hour like this. When the devil's economy is falling and we need to have classes on how to handle the fall as Armageddon rages on because it's not going to get any better. We got to have classes on how to survive, not just a survival kit, <laughs> a survival kit. The survival kit is the brotherhood and the sisterhood. That's the survival kit. Everything else is supplement too. But if you ain't got love for your brother, then how in the hell are we going to survive? Yes, sir. Anyway. Anyway. Yes, sir. You got man. any more questions, my brother? Uh, well, we do, but I want I want us to leave on that positive note. But we got one more question for you, sir. On um, what are you doing while uh, you're at home? Like when you're not studying the teachings of Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, are you watching anything to lighten the mood up and you know to stay happy? Anything to bring you joy outside of, of course, the teachings and reading the Quran lessons? Are you watching anything? Uh, so you know, I, I like I love watching the news. Mm, mm. I love watching the news. I love staying abreast of true current affairs. Mm, mm. Not the affairs that's on the local networks or anything like that. Cause that's, man, that stuff is so skewed. I watched a man on a show. He's a scientist. And he was talking about the effect of Google and how Google had determined 6 million votes during the last presidential election. Yes, sir. Now, many people can say that, but what he did, he had 12,000 people that he put these kind of software on their computer. And what they did, case in point, like when you go to YouTube, you may watch something on YouTube. Well, then right after whatever you're watching comes up, something else comes up that you didn't know nothing about. Yes, sir. That's something that comes up is tailored specifically for you based on your viewing habits. Sir. But here's the thing, brother. There's no record of it coming up mm. unless you actually record it on your device. There's no evidence of it happening. This man studied this with 12,000 participants. And they learned how Google was literally shaping the election in 2020. Mm, mm. He said that in Florida, go to Google's homepage, usually it's blank except the search engine part, right? Yes, sir. But on the day of the election, those who were registered as Democrats, the message on the homepage of Google in Florida was go vote, mm. go vote, mm. go vote. Now, for those who were Republican, 59% of them received the same subliminal message on Google's homepage during that day of the election. Mm. He said, this proves that they were encouraging people to come out and vote who were Democratic, just the poll to those who were Republican. Yes, sir. See, this is, Google is such an evil demon. Mm. Facebook is evil. It's evil. I don't know nothing about Elon Musk. I can't vote, vouch for him. Hell he is. I know this. Are he trying to fake like he wants to make X all free? The man is one of the number one government contractors that they got in America. He mm. makes money working for the government. Mm. Mm. The smallest car production companies on earth, but he's got one of the largest, uh, biggest uh, uh, 
stock prices. Dead. Because people invest in him, they not investing in Tesla. They investing in SpaceX, which mm. is one of the leading contractors in America. You may remember when Jeff Bezos from Amazon was with him because he said Elon Musk was getting the lion's share of contract work with the government. Don't care nothing about people. They about money, man. Mm -hmm. Big money. The government is the biggest memory gland around. Your schools. It funds your hospitals. It funds everything. So anybody that's got any kind of contract today is tied somehow to the government, directly or indirectly. I sell to schools. If you can get them to buy, they always buy. Funded by the government. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yes, sir. So I, I love watching the news. They watch a yeah. little nature. I like watching the news. Excellent. Yes, sir. And thank you for breaking that down uh, too about the news. Uh, give me some perspective uh, with some of the Google searches and things that, because uh, you always see it on TikTok, all of these things. I'm like, how y'all know I like this show? Or like, you know what I'm saying? It just it just happens. It, it, it's, it's not happenstance. Um, but the captain, I want to make sure that we reiterate to everyone, dollar sign, S-E-R-19, one nine, V-A-N-T. That's dollar sign, S-E-R-19, V-A-N-T. That's uppercase S too, brother. Yes, sir, you. uppercase S. Yes, sir. And we want to just show love. Can't wait to put this on YouTube right away. And um, we'll chop it up and make sure that we promote it. And just I want everyone to make sure we show love to break Captain, I had some more questions, but I think that we're good today. We are fed. And, uh, you know, Michelle, Lab will bring you back. But I want us to bring you back uh, after we've done our part uh, as those who show love and support and watch. But I want to make sure that we reiterate dollar sign, capital S-E-R-1-9-V-A-N-T. Yes sir. On behalf you, of, sir. yes, sir. Thank you. On behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we thank a lot for you and your family. Thank a lot for your children. Um, and we just look forward to doing whatever we can do to help and, and show love to you. Uh, for you've done that to my family and to many families all across the, the nation of Islam and outside in the community as well. Uh, this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off of the People's Podcast. Let's make sure we do our part, y'all. Let's make sure we do our part. As-salamu alaykum, sir. Well, alaykum salam, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.